There's that Tom. He talks all the time. What a throat goat. That's not what that term means. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I did not mean to whistle, but whatever. I didn't even know you could whistle outside of picnics. It was a thing in uh, Arceus, I believe, but I, I can't recall getting much use out of it. Yeah, it's to like make Pokemon realize you're there, which you don't want to do 90% of the time. Now, this woman will proc the DLC. If you've been in all the gyms again, Gita will proc the uh, Tawny. But what we're here for is the classes. That's not the classes. This is the classes. We're going to need that thing to get to where all the teachers are at anyway. <laughs> Alright, let's start with Mr. Jacques. I don't think the answers for the classes matter, so I'm going to let you go on that one. But I do have all the answers for the midterms and final exams ready if you need help on those. Okay, okay, okay. Hello, hello. I hope everyone's ready to learn some new things today. I seem to remember teaching you all about the importance of eggs in our last class together. Hopefully not with a live demonstration. A registered Pokemon born from eggs as well as those encountered via other methods, so don't you worry about that. And uh, hey, just so you know, I'm the one who developed the Pokedex app. I sure wish your boxes would show what Pokemon the egg came from, or like what's going to hatch out of it, because I've got a lot of eggs in my box that I have no idea what they are. Huh. Okay, so Jacques and Lavelle worked together back in the day. Wait a second, how did I get into this? Pretty sure I was talking about the Pokedex. Uh, anyway, today I'd like to teach you about catching Pokemon. <laughs> we just kind of showed that off. <laughs> I've nearly finished my Pokedex, my dude. There's another way to up your chances of a successful catch. Can you guess what it is? Uh, give the Pokemon a berry... Prove you're stronger than the Pokemon. Yeah, that works in Arceus. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, and Tom, great job. The correct technique for making Pokemon easier to catch is to inflict them with a status condition. Sleep and freeze are two times for the catch rate, but those can wear off. Paralysis doesn't wear off, but it's only 1.5 times. Uh -huh. uh, confusion doesn't add anything, and I don't know if burn adds anything, but burn also hurts the Pokemon, so you're going to end up killing it with a burn if you try to do that. Yeah, I tend to favor sleep and paralysis, or maybe, like, freeze over burn or poison. No guaranteed freeze move, as far as I know, though. Yeah. That might be a little bit broken, actually. Yeah, this is true. Because you have, like, hypnosis and yawn, which are guaranteed sleep, but they either have a low accuracy or they take a turn to activate. And then you've got stuff like Thunder Wave and Nuzzle which are guaranteed paralysis. Uh-huh. All right, let's go chat with Miss Time. Is it going to make me do maths again? I'm pretty sure that's some kind of crime. Crime time at that. Ah, yes. Crime time with Mrs. Rhyme, who is actually called Time. Her sister or cousin is... I'm getting confused now. Hello, everyone. Let's have a fun class today. Tell me, do you all enjoy fortune telling horoscopes and the like? I think it feels great to read your horoscope and see that it says good luck is coming your way. So today, I'd like to teach you all math while focusing on the topic of luck. I like tarot reading, not least of which because it's in Persona, the, the tarot decks and, and Arcana and everything, but just the whole concept in general is pretty neat. The rest of the fortune-telling horoscope stuff I don't really get into. This can cause a great upset in battle. Does anyone know what percent chance a Pokemon has of landing a critical hit? Tom gets upset uh, when critical hits land on a Pokemon you're trying to catch. I want to say 12%? I actually have no idea what this is. Oh my, that might cause a bit too critical of a situation, Anton. The chance of landing a critical hit is said to be 1 in 24, which figures to roughly 4.17%. The odds are more favorable for certain moves, though. Why, moves such as Stone Edge and Shadow Claw have about a 12% chance. You can also use a move called Focus Energy, or an item known as a Dire Hit. The first generation of Pokémon, your crit chance was also based on your Pokémon's speed, mm -hmm. which meant that moves like Slash, with an increased uh, crit rate on a Persian, 
were pretty insane. Is that the bell? I suppose that's all for now. What a shame. Next class will be our fun midterm exam. I hope you'll all be looking forward to it. Yay, maths. I wish school let me do my midterms whenever I wanted to, instead of saying you have to do it now. Yeah, that would be great. Hey, Gita. <laughs> She's just in the bottom corner like a fucking political cartoon. Ah, here we go. Miss Ryfert. That, that ad of Spongebob showing up as Cora's falling down. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. <laughs> Greetings, my little students. Whatever you did yesterday, it is now a part of history. Oh, cool. Teach anxiety and entropy to the students, why don't you? <laughs> As you should remember from our last class, Area Zero's great era of exploration began about 2,000 years ago. This era lasted for approximately 1,000 years, but not a single soul was able to venture all the way to the deepest reaches of Area Zero. Hey, we've done that. I don't know why. We kids managed to do it. 200 years later, or 800 years ago, the Empire and its surrounding nations united into one entity. This was the formation of Paldea as we know it today. It really made sense for the nations to all unite, because it's one single body of land surrounded by 600 miles of water. There's nothing else nearby in visible range. <laughs> This very structure is a piece of history. Ah, things of old are truly splendid. I would certainly prefer it not to have the Pokeball portion, though. A relatively new addition. Yeah, I did think that looked a little gaudy. Uh, aha! Perfect timing to make eye contact, young Anton. Let's see if you've been listening to my lecture. Tell me, approximately how many years ago was this academy of ours established? Uh, 800, I believe. Correct. I see the look of concentration on your face was indeed just that. Let me tell you, this is not art reflecting life. If you look up gormless in the dictionary, first of all, you won't see anything because dictionaries tend not to have pictures, but if they did, there'd be a picture of me. <laughs> I don't know how we got this photo of the prof professor from Legends Arceus. Uh, they had picture boxes and whatnot back then. What if they just had a photo from our character that had their smartphone? <laughs> what is that miraculous device? Alright, midterms coming up. We'll smash all these midterms in a row, I think. Hey, Gita. Why won't you talk to me? We've already done languages, so battle studies next. Let's go see the Adrenaline Freak again. I'm not dancing. <laughs> Why? It ruins the frame rate. Then again, what doesn't in this game? Uh, yeah, for real. Surprised having all these models on screen doesn't. Last time we learned about Terror Raid Battles. Did any of you have a chance to try them out? Done a few. Terror Pokemon are super strong, and the more difficult ones will use an even tougher tactic that you'll need to deal with. I'm talking about their Terror Shield. Yeah, it's very similar to the thing that the raids in Sword and Shield had, where they would just shield their HP at a certain point. Originally, I preferred the way they were done in Sword and Shield, but after I played more, I definitely prefer uh, the way the raids are done in this game. They're still definitely bad, in a lot of ways, but yeah. <laughs> Close your eyes and give in. Call your parents. <laughs> <laughs> Terrestrialize and attack it, of course. That's right, you're a regular terror raid battle master, aren't you, new kid? The Medicham dance to you. Ah, he, he's one to do that. But having a Pokemon terrestrialize is an effective method to overcome that issue. A terrestrialized Pokemon will do more damage to shield with Pokemon, especially if it uses moves that match its terror type. Dealing enough damage to a Pokemon with its terror shield up can destroy the shield and break the Pokemon's stance. Using a terrestrialized attack is actually more beneficial than using a super effective attack. 
to take down the shield, I have been told. I see. As they say, fight fire with fire and terror Pokemon with terror Pokemon. Be sure to work together with your teammates to smash through your opponent's terror shield. Everything is dependent on stats and attack power, of course, so keep that in mind when you're doing raids. Next class will be our midterm exam. Aim for a perfect score. Ozu! Ozu! Oh, when down! Not tired of the song yet, are we? Nope. I find it catchy. I think that's the main problem with it. Uh, we've already done the midterm for languages. Have we? Because it's on class four. Oh, right. Sorry, I, I was not paying attention to the... That's <laughs> alright. <laughs> At least one of us is. Look forward to when I do my first RPG solo. That's going to be a fun one. <laughs> Yo, what's up, Hassel? Hello, person who beat me. Hey, he was happy about it. I guess he was. Thank you all for your kind words. <laughs> Fucking Gyarados. Hey, <laughs> I know, I know. Ah, uh, so... Ah, oh, this is good, we're doing this after Dendras. So I've decided that today we will take another look at how a Pokemon can terrestrialize. It's not quite the lessons in Bully, where you do snake or whatever. Like, you have to fill in a picture while the racers try to get you. Huh, okay. I was thinking about that game earlier. It's one I've never played, but it's always kind of been a fascinating concept. Well, we could always play a scholarship edition uh, down the line. I'm pretty sure we did a stream of it years ago. The, the base... the original version, anyway. Not that it got saved anywhere. What is this shape? I have no idea. Dendritic. That is a new word for my vocabulary. Yeah, I've never heard that. Are you serious? Do you know what a snowflake is? The Grinch lives here. I keep forgetting the Gibbles are professor. Arvin is enraptured in this lesson. <laughs> he is. Ice-type moves would not be very effective against it. Keep in mind, usually they would deal quadruple damage to Gibble. Arceus smote it with quadruple damage. There are some children here that can't be older than five. That's a little weird. Hmm. Yeah. Age has always been a nebulous thing in Pokemon games. Do you not feel the great mystery of nature? The beautiful enigma we live in? Cough? Ah, uh, this is a bit of a tangent, but Mr. Jacques' glasses are also hexagonal, aren't they? I almost forgot to mention that you can change your Pokémon's Terra type at the Treasure Eatery located in Medali. You have to spend 50 Terra Shards, which in the base game you can only get from doing raids, and it's very slow going. Uh, I can imagine. They don't want you getting too much of an advantage. But then they make it super easy in the DLC because there's Terra Shards all over just on the ground. Glamgib. That means I understand, Spa. <laughs> I guess it has to. Saying a lot with a little. Hey, Gita. Alright, I think one more class and then we can start the midterms. Indeedy so. And it's Homek? Mr. Saguaro. I actually didn't notice that the Gengar changed to a Psyduck. Put away your phones, it is time to begin class. In my last class, I taught about HP restoration. However, after class, I was asked by several of you about PowerPoints, commonly known as p, -p <laughs> The kids coming up to ask the teacher about PP, and they're just holding back their Snickers. <laughs> <laughs> no S bueno. <laughs> what happens when a Pokemon, when it loses all of its PP? It can't use moves. Incorrect! It can use Struggle! Well, it can't use normal moves. Fair enough. Did you know that when fighting Gary, Helldragon struggled his Pokémon to death? 
He's not in the group anymore, so I'm continuing the legend in his stead. <laughs> Just in case any of you are worried, because Helldragon lives around Florida, he is doing perfectly fine. Ah, okay, that's good to hear. Uh huh. Items such as ethers and max ethers can also be used to restore Papa. Be careful not to confuse potions with ethers in the heat of battle. However, ethers are not sold at shops, so you should use them judiciously if you find them. Well, because items respawn in the overworld, there's still an infinite amount of them in the game. Uh huh. That paper spawned into the kid's hand. It's fun. As you can see, HP isn't the only thing you must keep an eye on while adventuring with Pokémon. I hope that we, you will all take care to ensure that your partner Pokémon can perform at their best as you each engage in the treasure hunt. Our time together has come to an end for today. Our next meeting will be an examination day. Be sure to review well in preparation. I've already forgotten everything. Empty my mind of everything except for fine dining and breathing. Ah, I see. Acquire a taste for smooth jazz. <laughs> Alright, time for the biology midterm. Yeah, we may as well just keep doing them in order. What do you mean it's impractical? I don't like the sound of that. Yeah, don't be late to a test. Don't be late in general, but don't be late to a test. Yeah, for sure. Hello, hello everyone! Today is our midterm exam! It sure feels good to fill in all those empty spaces on the answer sheet, doesn't it? Yeah, whether it's correct or not, it feels good. Uh, what button would you use to let a Pokémon out of its ball so that it can walk with you? This is a trick question because there's two correct answers, but yeah, it's, it's ZR. ZR. Combine one letter and one number below to correctly say when and where eggs are found. During picnic in your basket. Yes. A2. Correct. Which of the following is an effective way to warm up eggs? Going to sleep, walking around, or battling? Walking around. There are ways to cut the uh, hatch time down as well. Uh, what will not make Pokemon easier to catch, giving them a berry, surprising them, inflicting them with poison, using certain kinds of Pokeballs. Giving them a berry, I think. Yeah, I guess poison does affect the catch rate then. What will make it easier to catch Pokemon of higher and higher levels? Gym badges. Forklift certification. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> This question won't affect your grade. How do you like the po <laughs> Did you- Is this a fucking product survey in my midterm exam? <laughs> That's alright. How likely are you to recommend the Pokedex app to others? <laughs> Fuck off, Jock. That last question was just something that I'm personally curious to know. You should be fucking disbarred. Or whatever a teacher is. I don't know. I'll grade these right away. I hope you're all looking forward to seeing how you did. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Frankly, the exams are pretty quick. It feels great to get a test out of the way, doesn't it? Let's have a look at your results. You must get three questions correct to pass the midterm exams and four questions correct to pass the final exams. Let's see how you did on your biology test. You answered five out of five correctly. Ding, ding. That's a passing... No, Tom. <laughs> Get over it, you have other shit to do. You got upset at that last time. <laughs> and Mr. Jacques asks us to give this reward to any students who pass the exam. Yay. Woo. I think the other one gave XP Candy M. Huh. <laughs> Alright, math midterm now. God help me. At least this one is mostly math about Pokemon. Alright, you've piqued my interest. But I think some of these are going to be pretty easy. <laughs> Alright everyone, it's time to begin our midterm exam. I'm sure the fun experiences you all had in my class will serve you well as you answer. How much damage does Water Gun do when it hits a Fire-type Pokémon? Oh, double damage. Yeah, see, these are easy. How much damage does Razor Leaf do when it hits a Fire-type Pokémon? Half damage. Yeah. And now it's time for actual math. If you spent 2,000 on as many 200 Pokeballs as possible, how many would you get? 
Now we got tricked by this in class. Surely it would be 12, because wouldn't we get two Premier Balls? Uh, hmm. That's right, you, you would get two Premier Balls. Oh no, because you only get 10 Pokeballs, and you get one Premier Ball for every 10, so it would be 11. Oh, yeah, because put a zero on the end, Tom, it's 2,000. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's me overthinking maths as per usual. What percent chance does a Pokemon usually have to land a critical hit? About 4%. Yeah, we just answered that in class. How much damage does a move deal when it lands a critical hit? I think it's one and a half times as much. One and a half times. Uh, in Gen 1, it was double damage, which is kind of nuts to go along with the speed-based crits that I mentioned earlier. Do go and ask for your scores at the front desk, and then take a nice break. We will not do that, because we've got a lot of this to get through. <laughs> Have a good time, if you will. <laughs> if you don't laugh, I'll fail you. I'd take the failure. <laughs> Let's see how you did on your math test. Yeah, five out of five. Ding, ding again. All right, and what's Miss Time giving us? Cool. I guess the midterms give small candies and the final exam gives medium. All right, the next one is... History. I do like history, but Lord knows I'm... Fate to repeat it. Spent a lot of time watching the History Channel with Mom recently. Maybe that'll help. Summon your historical knowledge from the dark recesses of your minds and answer the questions. Jeez, lady, can you calm it down? What is the name of the geological formation in the center of the Paldea region? It is the Great crater of Paldea. What if it was just the center of Paldea? <laughs> <laughs> what was long believed to rest in the depths of Area Zero? Treasure. Most people probably still think that. Uh, how many years ago did the Paldean Empire begin to rule this region? Uh, it was about a thousand years ago, wasn't it? It was two thousand. That's it. How many years ago was this academy built? This one is eight hundred and five? It's 805. Nice guess. Thank you. Oof. Those seeking blank need look no further than the origins of Paldea. Knowledge? I don't know, because the answer that the site gives is just oranges, which is not one of the options. <laughs> Those seeking oranges need look no further than the oranges. Well, our school is named after oranges, I'm pretty sure. So... Anyone who would seek Orange would come to the Ranger Academy. I feel like that's a mistake on the part of this website that I'm using. <laughs> but if you get 4 out of 5 right, you pass anyway, so it's fine. Making me sweat. Look at you. At least we got a laugh out of it. <laughs> Indeed, it's so small. You must get free, yeah, uh, you know how this works at this point. Yeah, for real. You answered five out of five! Okay, cool. Whatever you picked was correct. If thou seeketh oranges, look to the oranges. Yep, I, I think your theory is holding true, Spo. Keep doing your best. Alright, I think that's all the midterms done. No, of course not. There's still plenty more. I don't know why I thought that was all. <laughs> yeah, you wish. I think it's just because I reached the languages one and I was like, we've already done that. <laughs> no, but oranges though. Da -da 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 -da. What miss I thought Pokemon weren't allowed in class? I guess we can do our test in the classroom, at least. It might be hard to write your answers out on the field. Well, clipboards. That is what clipboards are for. I'll alternatively, just, you know, write it on the back of your Pokemon or whatever. The higher a Pokemon's special defense, the less damage it takes from special attacks. Which of the following has no effect on the move's damage? The move's type, the move's power, <laughs> the move's name. 
How many traders are there on a terror raid team? Uh, there are four. God, eight. Could you imagine how slow the switch would run? Uh, what is an effective method for breaking an opponent's terror shield, terrestrializing and attacking? What is Miss Dandra's favorite type? Fighting, of course. I saw you giving it everything you've got. I'm sure you'll all get perfect scores. At least Jock put his personal question as a bonus thing. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was like a thing in Harry Potter for one of the exams. It might have been for Professor Lockhart. Like, what is Professor Lockhart's favorite scent? What would he most like to receive as a birthday present? Yeah, that was the exams that he put up because it was all about his books and not the class that he was actually trying to teach. Yeah, Chamber of Secrets, yeah. Yay! Woo! That's a very good trainer, said Gita. Too bad I can't turn around. <laughs> good. Stay in stasis for all I care. I feel like that was the easiest of the midterm so far. Well, it's Dendra. It's battle studies. We've been studying that since we started playing these games. Uh-huh. Now, what is an art exam gonna be? Like the others, but about hassles of classes. That sounded nice in my ear. Hassles classes. I do hope you're all ready, because it is time for your midterm exam. Focus and do your best. Some of you need to turn around and actually write on your desks. What is the name of the gemstone that blows over a Pokemon's head when it terrestrializes? Uh, it's a Terra Jewel. When the answer to question one is the shape of flowers, what type does it represent? The grass type. What shape are most snowflakes classified as? Hexagons. Yep. Where is the eatery that allows you to change a terror type? Medalli. Two thirds of this exam was covered in the last lesson. What makes something beautiful? It's in the eye of the beholder. Uh, there's no correct answer is actually the correct answer. I don't know. Time's up. Pencils down, please. According to this website, which had the wrong entry for the previous class, so who knows? Orange. Anyway, good work, everyone. You can check your results at the front desk. Wahoo! Nice. And that's the last of the midterms done and dusted. Nope, we still do have one more. You did the same thing. We still have home ec. Good. The hell is a home ec midterm? <laughs> it's just the same thing, but about his classes. Because home economics, for me, was like you would cook or something. Yeah, it's, it's about, about taking care of your home. So it would be cooking and potentially cleaning as well. But for Pokemon, that's going to be about picnics, mainly. The time has come to test how well you have all learned here in my class. Let's begin before the information simmering in your brains from a last-minute crab session fades. Real. Which is not an effect of a picnic meal? HP restoration, curing poison, increasing speed, getting meal powers. I think it's increasing speed. It is, because the switch would break if you could move faster than we, what we do. <laughs> oh my god. Which of the following effects, the kinds of meal piles received from a particular meal? Fillings and condiments, the number of people eating, the color of the utensils. Are you taking the piss? It's the filling and condiments, of course. Yeah. Uh, which of these berries can restore a Pokemon's HP? Uh, that is an orange berry. I remember that from my days in uh, Gen 3. Uh, Leandro wanted his Pokemon to decide on its own when to use the item in battle, so he gave it an orange berry. This will work as he hopes. Instructions unclear. Berry is now lost. Oh, God. The answer is true. <laughs> if a move runs out of Papa, it can no longer be used. If a Pokemon runs out of PP for all its moves, it can only sit there in frustration. False. Correct. The time for answering questions has come to an end. Please remember to ask for your scores at the front desk before leaving for the day. 
Sorry, I've got more treasure to go find. There's like two entire regions for us to go explore in the DLC. I kind of want to get to them, really. Shush, shush, shush. Don't worry about it. You answered five out of five correctly. Woo. That's a passing score. And now, all the things are out of the way. Yes, we are finally actually done with the midterms. Alright. And now we go down these one at a time. Let's go! Hello, class. Today we will be peer-reviewing the Pokédex. Hello, hello. I hope everyone's ready to learn some new things today. You all did really great on the midterm exam. Except you. You know who you are. I was going to make the same joke. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we're now heading into the last half of our classes together. It's time for our knowledge to evolve and grow, just like our Pokémon. Evolution. Yep. Haha. <laughs> Evolution. Oh, he's a creationist. Jesus. <laughs> As your Pokémon battle and level up, they learn moves and get stronger. And for some Pokémon, once they've leveled up enough, their appearance changes and their stats increase, sometimes by a lot. I think that applies to almost every Pokémon, that their appearance changes. It makes them very trusty partners in battle. To do this, you must remember a certain button when your Pokémon begins to evolve. What do you mean by button? To cancel evolution, press the... B button. B for best answer. I assume it's on the Pokedex and it just sends out a wave of energy. Honestly, that's a better explanation than breaking the fourth wall. And if you don't want to keep doing that, just give it an Everstone. Yeah, those are the more complicated ones, the ones that need a specific move. Oh, yes. The way Primate evolves into Annihilate is especially strange. You see, there's a certain move that... Ding dong. Yeah, well, we already know about that anyway. It, he's in our team. Thank you all for your attention. NK is still the weirdest evolution in the series, and I wish they would change it. Indeed. Give us an item called a Flippy Stone or something. <laughs> yeah. Alright, math next. Goody. Suck it up, Swar. We're in this together. <laughs> hey, I can leave if I want to. I can just tell you my mom's calling for me and I disappear for 15 minutes. Uh, have you done that before? Uh, hey, it's time for class, Tom. <laughs> wow. We have passed a new threshold and I view you differently now. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done it on purpose. It's usually just if I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Fair enough. I can only assume that this means you all have come to love numbers. Stay sharp and try your best for the rest of my classes too. Speaking of staying sharp, do you know how that word applies to Pokemon battles? That's right, it has to do with stat boosts. A Pokemon stats can rise and fall throughout the course of battle, correct? I don't really know how that connects to the word sharp though. Yes, I know about work up. If that same Pokémon from our previous example were to use Workup again, both its attack and special attack would have risen by two stages total. Uh -huh. This results in a 100% increase in damage dealt, making its moves twice as strong. Uh -huh. Sword Dabs, on the other hand, boost attack by two stages, allowing the Pokémon to deal double damage after just a single use. But it only affects attack, whereas Workup is attack and special attack. Uh, it would do quadruple damage. It would do triple damage. Just one stage. See, that's why we have two people here. One of us to pay attention, one to press the buttons. So being raised four stages would result in a four times 50%... Oh, God almighty. The base damage of a move is 100%, so adding 200% to that gives us 300%. In other words, the next move the Pokemon uses can deal triple damage. I'm not joking, I'm starting to get a headache. <laughs> I'm not playing this up, I'm not pretending to be stupid. Numbers discombobulate me just that much. Oh, the damage formulas that Pokemon uses are insanely complex, and I'm glad they're, at least so far, not really going into the 
the meat and potatoes and everything, because it gets kind of nuts. Now, meat and potatoes, I can definitely get along with. I'll see you all again next class. Please have smaller numbers next time. Well, based on the questions I see on the uh, final exam, some of these will actually be pretty interesting. Cool. Alright, history now. You'd like history? Then take this, Final Flash! Congrats, you're not part of history. It's okay, Final Flash never works. Until it needs to, and then it does. Speaking of, I am actually covering the What If story routes in uh, Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. A new video goes up every Wednesday, and there might be a new Dragon Ball playthrough in 2025. I'll just leave that there. I also did an announcement for uh, Naruto Ultimate Ninja. Starlight Road will be, and I will be covering that. Uh, the playthrough for that one's probably also going to start next year, so I guess 2025 is going to be the anime year for HFC, more so than normal. Oh lord, once upon a time there was a king who very much enjoyed collecting treasure. He was particularly fond of treasures from other countries. This is called colonization. One day, a merchant from the east heard rumors of this king and came to meet him. This is the story of the ruined treasures that we went and caught. The four treasures were as follows. A vessel, a sword, a set of tablets, and a set of beads. Seeing such rarities before him, the king leaped for joy. He showered the merchant with gold coins and claimed all four of the treasures for himself. Ah, perfect timing to make eye contact. You're the teacher. I'm supposed to be paying attention. <laughs> what do you think these tablets were? Uh, wooden planks for writing on, handheld electronic devices, medicine you can chew. Well, it's wooden planks for writing on, isn't it? Correct. Your daily pursuit of knowledge serves you well. The other two things are technically tablets, just different kind of tablets. As you may know, they fell out of popular use as paper became more universally available. For the king to consider these paper substitute treasures, they must have been of superb quality. That, or perhaps they had some amazingly profound teachings written on them. Obviously, the ones that we can see on Wochian are faded out and at such low resolution that we, as the players, cannot see what they say. Very cool. Art influencing the story. If you are interested in how the story ends, you may come to see me outside class hours. Or just ask in Tom. <laughs> That'd work, I guess. Next up, we have languages. Ah, yes. We didn't get to take this one because we had already completed the midterm for it. How did you like the midterm exam? You all did really great. That was a while ago. It's okay, I remember it. Troy Bon response. Great answer. Mercy, my friends. I knew I could count on you, stars. Leading up to the midterm, we learned all sorts of words from different regions. Starting today, though, we'll be throwing a curveball, for we begin listening comprehension. In between all of these recording sessions, I watched one of my friends stream Neo The World Ends With You, and I realized why this teacher bothers me, since he injects different languages, is because there's a character in that game that does the same thing, and I always hated him. So Zeta Slow. That's a mathematical term, it's not a language. Well, I guess it's sort of a language. The same Pokemon's cries may sound different depending on what it wants to say. And what game it's coming from. Let's learn some Pokemon language. Jeton Pre, if you would be so kind, Pikachu. The fuck you say to me? Piga! What emotion do you suppose Pikachu was trying to convey just now? Happiness? I, it seemed like happiness, yeah. Sorry, Ed Tom, that's not right. When Pikachu says... Pega! It's using its angry voice. Why is it look fucking angry, then? Uh, yeah, its facial expression didn't change. Don't you think he did a great job? Give Pikachu a round of applause, everyone. Stop taking Botox. 
consequence of me just punting it out the window. <laughs> the same Pokemon can even communicate its feelings in many different ways. Their voices may change depending on their mood and physical condition. Try listening more carefully to Pokemon. You might gain a deeper understanding of them. This is the most useless lesson yet, because that does not happen in-game. No, and it means nothing anyway. <laughs> Some don't actually communicate with words at all, but instead use things like electromagnetic or ultrasonic waves. Some even use telepathy. I mean, this is great as an in-universe lesson, because this is actually something that would help people in-universe, but for us as the players, it means literally nothing. Pigar. I'm very angry, as you can clearly tell. Okay, so I'm not screwing with you. I actually have to step away for a minute. <laughs> Okay, I'll do some on my own. He just wants to piss. Anywho, next lesson. Battle studies. Alright, got a few more, and then we're moving on to lesson six. Class will begin soon, don't be tardy. Another day, another round of battle study. Oh, Sue, let's get right to it. You all gave everything you had on the midterm exams. Well done. We'll resume our regular classes today, so keep up that energy for the second half of the term. Have you all been using the R button to send out your Pokemon? If you do, your Pokemon will run off in the direction you're facing. It's a super useful tactic that lets your Pokemon pick up faraway items for you, and that's not all. If there's a wild Pokemon near where you sent your Pokemon, they'll start battling each other. Yes, I've uh, used auto-battling a lot, trying to find shinies and so on. Just as the name implies, your Pokemon will act on its own during auto-battles, meaning you won't have to give it any commands. If your Pokemon wins, it will get EXP points, just like it would in a regular battle. If you make good use of these battles, they can be a really efficient way to train your party. But you'll want to remember that Pokemon won't evolve or learn new moves right away if they level up from an auto battle. That's true. Also, if a Pokemon loses an auto battle, it will come back with just a small amount of HP left. Make sure to heal it up right away. Whoops, I just about did the whole class as a one-sided lecture. Does anyone have any questions so far? No questions here. Great, you're really good at this. I can't wait to see where you go from here. Even during auto battles, our Pokemon are out there battling for us. They're trainers. Keep an eye on them as much as possible, and if it looks like they're going to lose, be sure to have them retreat. Also, this goes without saying, but Pokemon with low HP are already worn out. They probably won't enjoy auto battles as much, so don't work them too hard, okay? You gotta stay hydrated. In conclusion, auto battles only work if a trainer and their Pokemon have a relationship of mutual trust. Be smart with how you use auto battles so you don't lose the trust of your Pokemon. For all of that really matters too. Indeed. I guess we're out of time as usual. If only these lessons weren't five minutes long. Wish I had that much free time when I was going to school. Really? Alright, next one. Let art. Peter is still there, still staring into space. Oh lord, we're uh, we're definitely going to be going over our three-hour time limit for this one. <laughs> I guess we'll see. Hello, class. It is I, Hassle, yet again. Oh, Penny's in this one. You thought it would be someone else, but no, it was me. As a reward for all your hard work, we have a special guest visiting us today. Now then, Brassy, please come in. Greetings. It's this dude. Kind of forgot that he existed. He's from the city literally named Artisan, so it makes sense that he's in this class. Uh-huh. Bit of a pun there, I guess. One of his major works is the installation titled Surrendering Sunflora, found in Artisan. Many of you who've challenged the Artisan gym no doubt familiar with these sculptures. And the Sunflora themselves. Indeed. Yes, I do recognize some faces amongst your students. 
I hope you all understand how fortunate you are to be able to attend Hass's classes. <laughs> Old Hass is the man who saved me when I had lost all hope and given up on myself. But he never gave up on me. I do not exaggerate when I say that he is my mentor in life. It is precisely thanks to Hass that I was able to establish my current art style. Fucking bean math. Okay. You get it? Because he's a grass type leader. Nope. Uh, I, I get the bean thing, yeah. No. Of course. <laughs> of course. Let's see. Ah, oh, why don't we discuss what Hass mentioned? Surrendering Sunflora. Can anyone here tell what my mood was when I crafted its detached expression? Uh, sad? I don't... I don't know. No! You pleb! You hack! When I made that sculpture, I had surrendered all hope. I was prepared to give up everything. I'd resolved to give up my life as an artist if that piece did not receive proper recognition. So you were sad. Don't smile again, please. <laughs> when I started out as an artist, I experienced many hardships. I even became deathly ill and fell into a slump that drove me into desperation. I began worrying about what would sell. I was concerned only with fame and fortune. But all of my pieces during this time had no depth. They were all shallow trash. It was then that I met Hass. He helped me realize how petty I was being. I'll spare you the details. Thank you. So how does this all fit into you feeling a certain way about the sculpture? Remarkable. Even I did not know the full story until now. This kind of thing is hard to tell someone, especially when they are so close to you. Now, I don't doubt that you adolescents will often find your heads crowded with worries. My advice to you is simple. Be honest with yourself, and do whatever your heart desires. So long as you don't cause trouble, that is. That is all from me. I must admit, I am beginning to feel a bit embarrassed, so I bid you farewell, Hass. It feels like some of these second round of classes is very subjective answers about stuff that you have to intuit yourself, rather than pay attention to what's actually happening. Well, you robot! Oh, bro, ho, 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 That is definitely how someone cries. <laughs> uh, please, just, just random noises for voice acting. It doesn't need to be full voice acting, just something. Indeed. It works for, like, Zelda. I mean, they started using voice acting, but it worked for Zelda up until then. Yeah. Skyward Sword was great for having that kind of thing. You know, Wind Waker, hoi! Yeah, exactly. It gives it personality, and it makes characters more memorable. We wouldn't remember Groose if he didn't have the kind of voice, you know? <laughs> Though some of you had to retake the midterm exam multiple times. Really? <laughs> Stand up so we can shame the person who had to deal this multiple times. That's right, you. Get out. <laughs> I feel like that was one of the easier midterms, too. Ah, meal powers. The student who asked this question is a young man who enjoys the culinary arts. Arvin? Maybe. He tells me that he regularly researches culinary techniques on his own and pays careful attention to the ingredients he uses. He also spends day and night studying all aspects of the culinary arts. Yet despite this, he is baffled by his inability to increase the effectiveness of his meal powers. Uh, probably not Arvin, then. So tell me, Master Antob, since you did quite well on your midterm exam... Thanks. What should our, <clears throat> what this young man do to increase the effectiveness of his meal powers? Arvin? Oh, I want to choose that so badly. <laughs> your answers in the classes don't matter. <laughs> oh, he's right in front of us. I didn't notice that. I, I cannot disclose the identity of this certain male student who enjoys the culinary arts. It may very well be Arvin, but it may not be. You're not great at this, my dude. <laughs> to increase the effectiveness of meal powers, your sandwiches must be filled with many different ingredients. For a single person, this may prove difficult, but if you prepare a sandwich with others, you will be able to handle a bigger serving of bread. Yeah, if you do sandwiches while you're in a union circle with other players, you can actually get level 3 meal powers, which is quite impressive. Oh, I was wondering how I couldn't make those on my own. 
big sandwich. I'm sure that Arvin will likewise work. <sighs> Whatever. Come on, man. <laughs> Ahem, the identity of the male student is a matter of privacy, so I would ask that you do not pry too deeply. The shocked face that he had a second ago, I want that to be the thumbnail. <laughs> oh! I'll try, I'll try to remember. Alright, I think we've wrapped back around to biology now. You like biology, Mr. Jacques? Yes. So, is six the final exam? It's not like six and then the exam? It's six classes and then the final exam. So it's three and then an exam, just like the first round. Okay, fair enough. So we've got this and then another round of classes and then the exam. So yeah, we're going to be here for a minute. Yeah, this is what we get for not doing it uh, piece by piece. Before we get going, do you all remember the... F <sighs> Director Clavel found out about it somehow and I got yelled at. Whoops. don't think he would really even care that much. <laughs> Speaking of color, today I'd like to teach you about all colors as they pertain to Pokemon. Yeah, this is cool. Some Pokemon have slightly different coloration or patterning on their bodies based on their gender or individual differences. In very rare cases, a Pokemon may have wildly different coloration compared to others of the same species. And sometimes they're not wildly different. Sometimes they're like one point different on the shade. Is this like the first time in-game shines have been brought up? It could be, other than like the Ponyta in Arceus or the Gyarados in Gen 2. Uh, discounting the point where you get the shiny charm. Right. In this game, it's 1 in 4,000. Jesus. I got really lucky with that Murkrow then. Shiny Pokemon appear at a rate in 1 in 4,000. Isn't that amazing? In older games, I think Gen 7 and earlier, I think it was 1 in 8,000. They actually lowered it. I guess it's not a placebo. People are experiencing higher rates of Shinies. Yeah, I mean, it's also because of the way online trading is now, it's also a lot easier to complete your Pokedex to get the Shiny Charms. He actually just mentioned the shiny charm. Yeah, and there's also outbreaks as well for Sword and Shield in this game to increase the odds. Mm -hmm. That's where I got my Larvitar from. Wouldn't you know it, I was searching for Pokemon doing auto battle. Just so you know, if you auto battle and the Pokemon does not attack that Pokemon, it's a shiny. And the one I was looking for didn't matter because it was running into a wall. <laughs> <laughs> Math. We're almost done, Tom. We're almost done with math. Almost done. Why would you lie like that? Because there's another one after this, and then there's the exam. <laughs> we're still almost done. We're, we're more than halfway done. Alright. With your relativity bullshit. Did you make sure to review last class's material in order to say sharp? No. At least you acknowledge my suffering. Percentages I'm a little bit better with. It's usually easier to handle than multiplication and division. Yeah, 60% of the time, it works 100% of the time. The accuracy of tackle is 100 or 100%, so if you were to use tackle 100 times, you could expect it to hit all 100 times. It used to not be 100. No. Huh. It's such a basic move, giving it any less than 100 seems cheap. Mm -hmm. It was also used to be a lot weaker. It had a lower power as well. Many of the truly powerful moves often tend to have lower accuracy. So when deciding whether to go slow or steady with moves that are sure to hit, or hard and fast with stronger but less accurate moves, you're already studying probability. Let's see here. Perhaps Surf and Hydro Pump would be good examples for this discussion. Surf has a power of 90. Its accuracy is 100, meaning you can expect it to hit every time. Hydro Pump's accuracy is only 80, but when it hits, its power is 110. I thought it was 120, that's even worse. So between Surf and Hydro Pump, which move would you want to use yourself? It depends on the situation. I would never want to use Hydro Pump because that increase in damage is not worth the drop in accuracy to me. I may have made it sound like there was a correct answer here, but there's not. 
That's how you teach people, by trucking them. I mean, that's technically correct. But in, in real life, you're probably going to go with Surf over Hydra Pump most of the time. <laughs> Reminds me of this one early Bob's Burgers episode where they're putting on, like, dinner theater in the restaurant. And it's like a murder mystery thing. And then there's like, who could it be? Ah, the murderer was me! What a twist! And one of the patrons is like, that's not a twist, that's a lie. <laughs> well, whatever, we're done with percentages for now. Until next class. Next math class, to be clear. And, yeah. History! At least history is pretty easy. Hopefully. <laughs> Alright, Missy, what kind of macabre tale are you going to impart to us now? Greetings, my little students. Whatever you did yesterday, it is now a part of history. Do you say that every time? Because it gets old pretty quick. Haha. -ha. History humor. Yes. Area Zero. Da -da -da. Yes, yes, we know about the Paldane Emperor who doomed everyone. 200 years ago, a group of explorers claimed to have finally reached its depths. The name of the team that achieved this great feat was the Area Zero Expedition. We're not great at coming up with catchy names. <laughs> not really. Skilled battlers, brilliant researchers, talented individuals of all kinds. Among the list of team members was the name of a man who was an author and brilliant natural historian, Heath. After returning from the expedition to Area Zero, he used his literary talent to record the events of the expedition and publish them. Ah, perfect timing to make eye contact, young Entom. Again. Let's see if you were paying attention. Again. What was the name of the team that first made it to the deepest reaches of the Great Crater? Uh, the Area Zero Expedition. The Survey Corps was back in Legend Arceus, I think. It sure was. You are quite the clever one. If you say so. I like how some of these are remember what I said two minutes ago, and some of these are, what emotion is this Pikachu feeling? <laughs> I thought she was going to bring up the Scarlet Book, honestly. Oh, there it is. There we go. At the time, the entire region of Paldea was absolutely buzzing about Area Zero. The Scarlet Book was so popular that practically everyone had a copy. However, the book itself was full of fantastical descriptions and illustration of things that could never be thought of as real. Yeah, about that. Do you want to check my box? <laughs> Probably could have phrased that differently. Do you want to check my Pokemon box? Could have phrased that differently, never mind. The Scarlet Book was condemned to the shelves of used bookstores as just another book of wild paranormal stories. Well, you might want to keep it on eBay, because the price is about to skyrocket. <laughs> Feel free to have a read if you're interested. I think Arvin is still holding on to the copy that he had. Mm -hmm. This ends today's lesson. We will unravel more of history's enigmas together next time. Once again, I will be hearing this song in my nightmares for like a week. Good. Alright, language is next. I swear to God, if you bring out another fucking Pikachu. <laughs> Pikachu. It's constipated. Of course, its face is neutral. How could I not guess? I'm glad I waited before taking a sip because I would have spit it out. <laughs> I hope you're doing marvelously well. It is time for another of Salvatore's language lessons. We... I would expect no less from my excellent friends. Even your replies to my questions are excellent. God damn it. <laughs> I could have sworn I saw an Amogus on the chalkboard. You know what it is? To the bottom right, sorry, bottom left of that Alola and Raichu, I thought that was Among Us as it was padding down. Oh. I do like that it has both versions of Raichu up there, though. That's the kind of thing I would like to study as the regional forms. Uh huh. If you would be so kind, Pikachu. Pika. That sounds a little bleak, doesn't it? Its voice seems a little lower pitched, too. What emotion do you suppose Pikachu was trying to convey just now? Sadness. 
Yeah, that one did actually sound a bit sad. What Pikachu says. Pika. It's expressing sadness. Kinda makes you want to cry, doesn't it? I had my Pikachu cry as if it was crying. A funny joke, right? No. This is terrible. I used to work for Team Rocket. <laughs> <laughs> Clapping. Apropos of nothing, let me give you all one of my wise words of advice. If you hear one of your Pokemon making sad noises like this one, you should treat them with even more kindness than usual. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay, maybe there is something to this after all, and I was just being a judgmental prick. <laughs> Whatever, the comments have already seared me. Ah, we got screwed over in the previous class, but he was actually kind of right this time around. The climatic finale. Adios, matinee! Fuck. Clicking too fast. Battle studies. Sorry, I was just hyped off for battle studies. For whatever reason, I'm afraid your game's gonna crash halfway through this. You might want to save at some point. I'll save after this one, don't worry. <laughs> God, I don't want to redo this. Another day, another round of battle study. Osu, let's get right to it. I hope you gave auto battles a shot like we talked about last class. Uh, we did previously. There was kind of only 10 minutes between these classes, though. It's also an efficient way to gather the Pokemon materials you need to make TMs at TM machines. Yeah, they'll pick up items on the ground if we didn't make that clear previously. I mean, you could just pick them up yourself, but that's up to you. I sure hope so, because it's pop quiz time. To create TMs, you need Pokemon materials and one other thing. Anyone remember what that is? You need Let's Plays. We do. Looks like you're already a TM Machine Pro, new kid. Why don't you know my name, miss? Are we still the new kid? <laughs> I'm, the, I'm one of the champions of the region. Sorry, I only focus on getting swole. I recently heard about some shady individuals getting LP illegally using a technique called hacking or something like that. It sounds like something evolved with a computer. I can't punch with that. So it's not relevant to me. Anyway, you can also add TMs that you want to make to your watch list. This will let you keep an eye on the materials you need to gather. She's not standing exactly in the middle of the court, and now it bothers me. I know, Spa. I know. You have to battle all kinds of Pokemon to get lots of materials. Oh man, I was just about to suggest we do some hands-on practice. You're always suggesting violence. Take care, you little rascals. Are you trying to get fired? I know. Don't call us rascals. Please save. I'm so worried. Okay, Spar, okay. Happy now? Yes. Barry is still fainted. <laughs> it's okay. As long as it's fainted, it doesn't have to deal with maths. We brought Neki to the Battle Studies class because of that, I guess. Alright, here we go. Ooh, I seem to be getting over my uh, weariness. My second wind has kicked in. Oh, nice. Hello, class. It is I, Hassel, yet again. All of these classes are taking place at night, by the way. I hope you don't mind. Pogging ditto. I'm sorry for making such a scene. We're not allowed to audibly cry here in uh, Naranja Academy, but we can say afterwards that we were crying. Now, uh, have any of you heard of the Ten Sites of Paldea? Yeah, we actually ran into one of them earlier. Yeah, we've uh, seen a few. Among them, I would say that the Grand Olive Orchard is likely the most accessible. It's kind of just right outside the gates. <laughs> yes, you can see the field after field of olive trees on the hill on the way to Cordondo. Two waterfalls are also counted among these ten sites, Fury Falls and Casaroya Falls. Then there's the peak of Glaciado Mountain, known as Paldea's highest peak. There's another cliff on Glaciado Mountain that's named after its rather unique shape. It's the top of a Jigglypuff. Seen from above? <laughs> you can only see it from above for some reason, it's an optical illusion. 
Uh, I think it's Gladiator's Grasp. Not sure. Actually, it's either Grasp or Reach, I would want to say. Well, if it's free pronged, I'm going to go with Grasp. Yeah! It looks like a hand taking hold of something, doesn't it, Anzum? Firmly grasp it. Got like a stick going through it. Today's the day for Spongebob references, I guess. <laughs> Indeed. I love that Eevee. I know Gyarados is your favorite. Also, if it's, if it's a free-pronged hand, it's most likely a Backscalibur, because you can find its pre-Evo on the mountain. Yeah, as we pointed out, the uh, the tiny little red hands that Backscalibur has. <laughs> uh -huh. I hear it's a hot spot for dates, and deservedly so for having such a romantic view. You gonna go on a date with uh, Brassel over there? You guys kind of had a thing going. <laughs> I imagine it's, what do the kids say these days, a very um, fleek selfie spot? <laughs> okay. Of course, you may feel that not all ten sites live up to their grandiose names. How often do we visit some tourist spot only to be disappointed? Not to say that you shouldn't visit them, only that you should keep your hopes in check. Like, isn't Plymouth Rock, like, really friggin' tiny? <laughs> I'm just saying, if you expected something like Pride Rock and The Lion King, you're gonna be disappointed. That's it for today! Pride Rock from KH2 instead. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Get to have a talk with Pete. That'd be interesting. Why was he a pirate? I don't know. I was trying to do Pete's voice. Shut up. You'd never support me, ever. Sure. Definitely. Absolutely never. <laughs> a lie that could not sustain itself. <laughs> Put away your phones, it is time to begin class. While you're out performing field work with one of your Pokemon walking alongside you, have you ever noticed changes in its coloration? No. Now, I don't mean that it suddenly becomes a shiny Pokemon or any nonsense like that. Can you imagine? I'm speaking of it becoming filthy. Oh, right, because you can wash your Pokemon during picnics. They get battered by wind and rain, they get covered in sand and mud. They get, in a word, filthy. I've seen many a trainer walking about with their adorable little Pokemon without addressing this issue. It is deplorable. I guess it's also a way to increase their uh, friendship level. Yeah, for ones that matter for that. I don't think I've ever watched a single one of my Pokemon in this game. I've done it a couple times. <laughs> Perfectly correct. I knew I could count on you to provide me with such an obvious answer. It's, it's a thing to do when you're sitting in a picnic waiting for eggs to spawn in the basket. When you are having a picnic, you can approach the Pokemon on your team and perform a variety of actions. One such action is putting them through what I like to call the Pokemon Wash. You start by... I know how bathing works. Yeah, it's... um. It's literally this, and uh, there are a lot of Pokemon that should be damaged by it. I like the little kids sitting on a cushion so they get up to the table high enough. <laughs> it's certainly quite a bit of work, but this will also restore HP and cure status conditions. Oh, nice. However, some Pokemon may have parts of their bodies that they don't want scrubbed, or that they would rather not get wet. I'll let you fill in the blanks yourself, audience. No comment. Now, the most important point that I must mention is that some Pokemon like to be dirty. Though I will contradict myself by saying this, please do remember that cleaning your Pokemon is not always the kind thing to do. Yeah, like, Doug Trios? Probably okay. Onyx, time for your bath. <laughs> he just sinks. 